this is Drew Dixon, Editor-in-Chief of GameChurch.com, and I'm here with Tom Joubert of the Talos Principle. So, and you've also worked on the Swapper and some other games as well, but um, tell us a little bit about, you're here at, at PAX showing off Talos Principle. Tell us a little bit about that game, what makes it unique. So in the Talos Principle, you're dropped into a sort of synthetic world that blends archaic architecture with sort of sci-fi elements. It feels like something that's been drawn from various different points and pieced together and the voice of a godlike character booms down and uh, tells you I created you, I created this world and I created these challenges for you to prove yourself to me. Um, however this is a philosophical puzzler so while you're solving the challenges in the game it'll be up to you to decide exactly why you're doing that. You don't need to buy everything that the god character tells you. Yeah, That's interesting. So. Um can you talk about like some of the religious symbolism and themes in the game? Like, what, where, where did you, what made you want to kind of tackle some of those things in this game? So um, the key reference, I guess, is something like the Garden of Eden. It's a kind of humanist retelling of the Garden of Eden in a way. I think that story is, um, if you interpret on it on a broader level, that story for me is not so much about God as about Human, humankind's drive to understand and explain the world, right? And, and that hasn't changed over time. Whether we believe in God or not, we still don't have all the answers. Um, and so I think that there's a lot that we can draw from religious history and learn from it. Um, and and, and I, I was thinking about this the other day. I suddenly realized I'm, I'm not religious, but I am sort of politically active. I realized the other day I basically invented Christianity without a God by sort of casting upon myself original sin because I feel guilty for living a Western lifestyle. And it's like, I, I, I'm always amazed by how many ways there are to play religion into what we're doing and, and to learn from that stuff, even if, you know, we don't all buy into it. So are you, what, what do you hope players gain from the experience of, of playing that? Are you, are you trying to help them process their own kind of worldview, their own process that what you know suss out what their own worldview is yes exactly um, I think that there's a whole load of people in the world who either don't know what philosophy is or if asked whether they were interested in it they would say no that's a sort of pretentious academic discipline It's a bunch of old men sitting in a room talking about things that don't really have any relevance but I don't think that's true I think everyone's a philosopher um, whether you're religious or moral or not moral whatever your position is You've done some. You've made some philosophical assumptions there. So this game is designed narratively to challenge those assumptions. The story adapts to who you are based on whether you tell it, "I believe in God and I'm doing this because it's the right thing," or whether you tell it, "I'm a utilitarian or I'm a complete nihilist. I don't believe in anything." The game's going to adapt and raise challenging arguments against your position. So I really want to use the game to encourage players to think harder about their philosophical assumptions. Uh, that's interesting because something that a lot of Christians say a lot of times is like everyone's a theologian, you know. Uh, and I, I, so it's interesting. It's a similar idea of you know whether we admit it or not, we all have beliefs about life and about the world and about God, uh, whether we acknowledge them or not. So that 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 seems like a really healthy thing to ask players to do is to process that and think about you know what their worldview is, what their philosophy is, what they think about God and life and all those things. Yeah, no, I think, uh, I think that's true. I think that everyone is a theologian, right? I mean, yeah. even if we don't believe in God, that is a right. statement yeah. within that discipline. And I would probably include theology within the broader umbrella of philosophy. Yeah. You know, um, it's all just, we're all trying to explain the world we see and uh, justify our existence one way or another, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's something that it's interesting because I think a lot of, there's a lot of people, it's changing, games are changing in that regard, but there's a lot of people out there who play games that are like, I don't want to think about life when I'm playing a game, like I just want to have fun. I don't want to think about philosophy and religion and, and theology. Um, what would you say to somebody who says like, just give me a fun game, like, whereas I think you're really trying to do something thoughtful here. Like how would you kind of counter that? I would say, uh, I'd probably say screw it, don't play the game, <laughs> to be honest, but there's so many great fun games here, you know, I mean look around where we are, like the Pro Force and the Hotline Miami, yeah. and there's a lot of fun out there to be had, and this game is fun, you can play this game as a completely abstract puzzler and completely ignore the story, it's, you know, we don't force cutscenes on you, um, it's there for you to dig into if you want to. 
So I kind of, I hope that if you just want to come to the game for a bit of fun to solve some puzzles and you don't care about all of the philosophy and whatnot, you can just play it like an abstract puzzle game and that's legitimate. Not everyone wants loads of, you know, cerebral stuff in their video games. However, now that I think about it, even playing something like Broforce over there, it's a really fun game, but it's also heavily satirical about, you know, Western imperialism, really, isn't it? Um, so, so the idea that we can't have fun and do the philosophy at the same time, I think, is is not not sound. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a misnomer that needs to be put to death by games like the Talos Principle. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Tom, thanks so much for your time. We were we. Uh, Really are looking forward to the Talos Principle and um, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on it. So, thanks man. Let your will be done.